In this video, I'll show the approximately half-scale version of the Robbie Jr. robot that Radio Shack sold in the mid-80s. My, uh, my version is strictly remote-controlled, as the Radio Shack one was autonomous and remote-controlled. I'll show a little bit of the operation now. It's controlled by a uh, universal remote. Just has simple forward, reverse, left and right. It can also be controlled by the remote I built for this guy right here. This was the, best, the silent running robot. I'll demonstrate that. You can see the eyes light up as, as each motor comes on. This is the remote for the original Robbie Jr. It's ultrasonic. It's an ultrasonic control, whether as uh, mine is controlled by infrared. For those of you who need one, I designed a, a 3D printed version with an Arduino heart that also uses ultrasonic to control the the original Robbie Jr. The robot was designed around this 80 millimeter Christmas tree ornament globe that I bought at Hobby Lobby for a, it was very cheap. Uh, the 80 millimeter is approximately half the size of the original and that's the scale that I used, 50%. You can see some of the differences that, uh, between the original and the one I built. I didn't want to have to cut out this plastic globe any, so the shoulders are actually inside of the globe, whereas on the original, the shoulders with the uh, ultrasonic receivers are outside the globe, and it's cut out to accept them. That would have been very difficult to, to do with any accuracy, so I just changed the design. This is this is not an exact copy. The original has claws that open and close. My version doesn't. The original has a bumper in the front, a bump switch, so it, when it's in autonomous mode it can detect when it hits something and backs up. Mine is strictly remote controlled and I didn't add that. The original has a button on top that changes its modes as well as switches in the arms. The original had a uh, autonomous <coughs> mode where it would uh, follow the remote when you put it in follow mode. This obviously doesn't have that. The original also had some sound bites that it would play as it was running around bumping into things and it would say follow me and things like that. Obviously I don't have any sound bites in this, although they could be added. Now I'll get a little closer and try to show some of the details. On the top, underneath the globe is the IR sensor. There are two LEDs for the eyes. This is something I just haven't cut off yet. It could be cut off, for, but for ease of assembly, and I've just left it on there. You could cut that off with a little razor saw. There's an on-off switch and a recharging port. The power source for the robot is just one of these power banks. Pretty comfortable. I believe they're still available. I bought one a couple of months ago. They have an 18650 cell in them and a 
circuitry that boosts the output to 5 volts and also uh, does the charging. One of the most difficult things about the build is this connector here has to be removed to fit in here. It has to be desoldered. That's uh, that was the hardest part of the whole the whole job. The hands do rotate. The arms also rotate. Inside the robot is an Arduino Pro Mini. that drives a uh, dual H-bridge motor driver and two N20 gear motors. I believe the motors I used were 60 RPM, but anything from 60 to 100 RPM should work. The globe, you have to use this, the globe comes in two halves. You have to use this half with the uh, diameter turned down so that it will go inside the, the top of the body. There are two notches that have to be put in. I just used a file and they help to locate everything in some tabs that are in the, uh, in the body. The arms, I haven't glued the arms together yet so I can show how they're assembled. They come in two halves. There is a slot in one half with a number three screw that's been filed or ground down on both sides to go into the slot to locate it. The hand just has a three millimeter screw run into it. You just have to adjust this until you get it to the tightness you want. And there's a pocket in the arm. And it goes on like this. Uh, in the final assembly, you would glue all this together. I just haven't done it yet so that I could demonstrate it. The top comes off. I still have it on. Turn that off. This is the IR sensor. I could have done a much better job on this. There's a small resistor. I believe that's mentioned in the data sheet for the IR sensor. Uh, the wires are just power ground and signal. Here we have the two LEDs. Uh, I believe they're 10 millimeter LEDs, but I'll write them down in the description on Thingiverse. Each one has a resistor, current limiting resistor. We, this, this part I call the dome has magnets with mating magnets in the body that will hold it on. The arms are held on by these three millimeter screws. These are just springs from uh, ballpoint pins with nylock nuts on the end to kind of uh, need to be adjusted a little tighter but they kind of hold the, the uh, arm in place. Of course this is the uh, Arduino Pro Mini with its power connections going down to the battery and charging circuit that are in the base. I'll continue to take it apart. The, the LEDs are mounted in this little insert that goes in the dome. It's a pretty good fit. Of course, it's, that's going to vary on your 2D printer. All of this stuff, or almost all of it, is keyed. There is a tab right here that fits into this tab.
and there is a tab on the front that fits into a tab on the top of a body. You can see these. You could just build this without the remote if you wanted to. You can see the way the top is constructed. Now I'll have to get a screwdriver and take the screws out of the bottom to access the rest of it. There are four screws here. Well, I believe I've already got them out. These four screws hold the motor mounts in. This screw is, holds this little caster on. I'll remove the top half of the body the main part of the body. This part has to be printed with supports because of this rim. It'll, uh, there are, in the design, this has a sacrificial bridge on it, these four screw holes. So when you, if you print it, you have to drill those out. That keeps uh, the support from being put in the holes, which turns into kind of a pain to get out. But the support will be all around here and around this this rim. And here's the guts of it. This is the 18650 cell with two wheels, the, the N20 motors, gearboxes, the motor mounts. This is the dual H bridge for driving the motors. If I had to do it again, I would remove these connectors and uh, solder the wires directly to them so that I would have more room, but it, there is enough room. The 18650 cell will be held in place by the top of the body. There's, it's a very tight fit. This is the charging circuit from the power bank with its USB connector removed. There are two wires that have to be soldered on. Uh, this is basically the same circuit as the silent running remote control robot had and I believe the uh, wires are the same in the same places. This is a switch. The switch is wired between the, the 18650 battery and the charging circuit. This is done so that uh, the battery will not self-discharge self if it sits there for a long time. My experience is that if you let these things set a couple of months, they will be dead when you go to use them. So I just decided to put the switch in between the battery and the board. This has been sitting around a couple of months and it uh, powered up, no problem. The, uh, the switch is the one that's commonly available on Banggood. This red part down here is the holder for this dual h bid bridge driver board. It just snaps in there. When it's held in place by just placing it on top of the motor mounts in the back and when you screw these mounting screws in, it'll be held down. There's there's nylon -like nuts holding those on. You can see the battery has a place molded into the case for it, or into the body. These wheels, you can see it right here, I believe. The shaft on the motor is a D-shaped shaft, and the wheels are, are uh, 
the holes in the wheels are D-shaped also. They can be kind of tight. You just have to use a file or whatever you have to get that to work because in 3D printing it's not going to be exact. Here it is a little further disassembled. You can see this is the mount for the H-bridge driver. These are the two N20 motors. These are the motor mounts. 